After you've configured Insights and it's applied your sensitivity definitions as well as your exposure definitions, you can go in and use the dashboard to review what it's found. To do that, log on to Avpoint Online Services and on the Home tab, locate and click Insights for Microsoft 365. When Insights opens, you will be on the dashboard on the Overview page. There are separate pages for each of your different types of Microsoft 365 objects. Starting first on the Overview page, we can see that there are no external users, but it has found three anonymous links and eight sensitive items. The sensitive items, remember, are based on your sensitivity definitions, which are defined under settings. If we scroll down, you can also view the status of your different types of access. And since we have no external users, there's no data here to show. Down towards the bottom, you get summaries of each of your different object types, including the count, whether or not there are any potentially problematic users, and any sensitivity that may have been found. So in our demo environment, we have six teams, no guest users, no sensitive items. For SharePoint, 12 SharePoint sites, nothing shared with external, but we do find some sensitive items in one of my site collections. And in OneDrive, 21 drives in total, one contains an anonymous link, but nothing is shared with external users. We'll come back to this in a moment. If we scroll back up towards the top, over on the far right, we have the overall risk assessment, and we can see the trend over the last seven days. So again, it has found eight high-risk items and no medium-risk items. Remember, your risk is calculated based on your sensitivity definitions and your exposure. Sensitivity is what is within your content, things that you may consider sensitive information, and exposure is who has access to what. In addition to the overall risk, we can click on the dropdown and view the risk matrix. The risk matrix is a cross-reference of sensitivity levels and exposures. At the lower left, low exposure, low sensitivity. We can see zero items. At the top right, high exposure and high sensitivity, also zero items. But in this case, high exposure and medium sensitivity, this is where those eight items are falling. We definitely are going to want to review what those are. Back over in the middle, if we scroll back down again to the object types, if you need to review anything found within your object types, you can click that object to drill down to its specific dashboard. You can also use these links over on the left-hand side. So let's first take a look at what's going on with our site collections and that sensitive content. So I'm gonna click SharePoint Online. Here on SharePoint Online, no external users, no anonymous links, but again, we're seeing those sensitive items. If I scroll down further, we can see who they're shared with, but we can also see there are no issues with unique permissions being assigned, so that's great. If I continue to scroll down, a little bit more information here, including that there is one site collection with sensitive items. And then below that, we can see here is that site collection. Number of high risk files is eight, and you can see that I can click that. So let's take a look. When we come in to view these items, we can see the names of the individual files. Over towards the far right, we can see who created them. Here, provisioning user in our demo tenant. But most importantly, out to the far right, the risk level based on the sensitivity and the exposure. Hovering over and clicking any of these will show you why that item is being considered high risk. So it found the social security number in that file and also under exposure that's shared with a large group. If I want to actually review the file itself, this button will take you to a separate tab allow you to log in to Microsoft 365 and review that content. There are some additional things you can do in here as well though, including viewing the permissions around that file. Part of the reason why it is coming up high risk is because a lot of people have access to it. If you recognize any specific type of permission that should not be in place, 
you'll note that we do have a remove permissions button. To get back to the top, I go to my risk analysis and we're back reviewing the individual files. Over on the left, if I go back to dashboard and overview, in addition to these items that were coming up sensitive, we also have anonymous links that are coming up. Remember, if we scroll down, we can see where that stuff lives. So we see that the anonymous links are in our OneDrives. Specifically, one OneDrive contains anonymous link. If I click OneDrive for Business, three anonymous links. If I scroll down, at least they're not shared with any external, so that's good. And we can again see there is one OneDrive with an anonymous link. Now you'll note that there's nothing here under the OneDrive with high risk. That means that that one anonymous link, based on your sensitivity and your exposure, is not coming up in the high risk category. That does not mean though that you don't want to review what those anonymous links are, if that's something that your users should not really be doing. If I scroll back up, I can click and we can view the anonymous links. What's the file? Where are the permissions? Out to the right, expiration date, has it been downloaded? And what's the sensitivity? Now you'll notice the sensitivity says NA. That's why that item is not considered high risk. Even if it's exposed, there are no sensitivity issues within these files. It did not find any content within those files that triggers my sensitivity. In this demo environment, specifically US personally identifiable information. There's none of that in there, so the sensitivity is coming up NA. That does not, however, mean that you don't want to take action. So for instance, if there is a file in there that should not be shared in that way, I can check it off and I can unshare, which will essentially invalidate the anonymous link that has been sent out to people. We can also click the dot dot dot, and we can see unshare, but also set expiration date. Right now, there is no expiration date. So if I click that, in the panel that pops out on the right, I can set when this particular link is going to expire, and then save. Once we reach that date, that anonymous link will no longer work. And then again, I can go to Dashboard and back to Overview. So we can see that the dashboard is a great starting point to get a high level view of what's going on with your content, where your sensitivity and exposure lies. Use it to review things like external users, anonymous links, sensitive items, and also the overall risk that you're experiencing within those scopes. Certain actions can be taken, but oftentimes this will provide insight so that you can go and then follow up with additional actions, such as going into policies and putting policies in place that do not allow people to perform certain things that you're seeing them perform. Thank you for watching this short video on reviewing risks based on your sensitivity and your exposure settings using the AthPoint Insights Dashboard.